having a conversation and this was early on, you were having a conversation and there was an opportunity where the seller had disclosed a pain point or something and I saw it as an opportunity for Brent to move in and establish himself as the hero, right? How can you solve that problem? But Brent went down the, well, what I'm looking for, what I want, what I need, what I, and that's all about Brent. That's not the way to her heart. Right? Yeah, it was that older gal, wasn't it? Right, and, and that's the other thing. It was like, she was an older lady and Everybody loves Brent, right? Especially older ladies. Like they're like, they're like he's just very endearing. Ryan's got the same thing going for him. It's and so you play into that. Um, and you had the same thing with a guy in Sumter, right? Like you guys were old buddies. You got introduced to him by someone who said, "Dude, this guy's a big jerk." And then you're like, "I think he's the nicest old guy in, in the world." And you hit it off. It's all about developing rapport. Um. And it's about them. It's not about you and what you want. Certainly, it needs to be your criteria. When you're talking to a broker, it can be a little more about you because they get it. It's business. But when it's the owner, there's far more emotion, far less business. Right? And I, what I'll do is share. I'll, I'll poke through and share the audio and maybe even the, um, our back and forth in the email. If I'll, I'll have to look and see how valuable I think it'll be. But I can share that with you guys. So this was the email I responded. Brent sent me the audio and my feedback to him was that, you know, overall it went really good. The next step is for you to improve cold calling is to focus on reading the sellers so that you can identify when to move out of fact finding mode. That's tell me about the story or tell me about the facility. That's the script that you would get. Does it have a fence? Does it have a gate? But you need some of that information. Um, but then he needed to move out of that mode and into progressing the sales and purchase process forward. Right, so I think with this one, I was, I didn't go after Cosman. I'm, I'm just emotional just thinking about her right now, and, and two of her sons, and I didn't, I just, I had a hard time knowing how hard to push them. You need to change your mind. You have to push, you have to ask. I think ultimately, if you do buy a facility, Probably take a lot of stress off of her. So I think you might want to decide. Yeah, I, I can see that. I, I mean, just, I, it's one thing from interrogating and really being aggressive, but I think it's just natural conversation. I think that changes. Yeah. And so that's like the house that we had that burned down, same thing. Right. Her husband died, and it was not so much strictly business as that she never wanted to go there again. It was a pain point for her, and she was done with it. So if you've extracted that, it's just a matter of. You don't have to be a hardcore businessman. We say, well, I understand, you know, um, if you're interested in selling it, we'd be happy to help you out and get you out of this situation or right. whatever it is, however you can reframe it to make her feel like she's unloading it for the right reason. Yeah, Mike, just out of curiosity, out of you bought, it would always be interesting to talk to your sellers after the fact and decompress them and find out how, how, what they were thinking on that side after you closed. You can figure out some stuff, but what it seems like from my buyers, our sellers, that as they get to know you, as you spend more time with them, they start to open up. Their mindset changes a little bit. We wanted this, but now like we can see a way where we can do some of the things that we wanted to do. That their mindset changes from dollars to what their future could hold, and that you could be the answer. Let's work with this guy, and all of a sudden, the closer you get to what giving them what they want. They drop their guard a little bit, a little bit more each time, and give you what. Uh, yeah, need. and right on with that is, we all think we want more money. The assumption is the seller wants to get the highest purchase price, but that's not. We there's something else we're after. There's a bigger why behind why we want to go make more money, and there's a bigger why behind why they're selling. And it's our ability to build rapport <coughs> and then paint the perfect picture. Yeah, find out what the why is find their pain point, demonstrate to them how our buying their facility from them will alleviate that pain and push them toward the better life that they want, right? So Brent's mindset, this is not, how we do one thing is how we do everything. The way that Brent 
tried to get his deal funded, he thought he was asking for money from people. The point at which she gets impatient with Brett. Mm -hmm. Because... I'm starting to remember this more right? now. <laughs> you were pushing, you were fact-finding, and there was an opportunity to... I don't remember all the details, but long story short, if you had been thinking about it differently, the way you now think about funding, there may have been a different result on this. Right. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not saying this is the magic it was kind of a, Because of that auto shop and the auction happened there, and that was the only way to get in to the storage facility, there was a lot of stuff going there on. There were moving parts, absolutely. Yeah. And so it wasn't going to be an easy problem for you to solve. No. 